Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian Custer. You know, it's the holiday season, and if you don't know what to give as a gift or as a stocking stuffer, well, today's sponsor, Manscaped, guarantees that they have the tools that you're going to win this year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition. And Manscaped's best-selling product, this bad boy right here. It is the Manscaped Package 4.0, which is at the top of every man's wish list this holiday season. I'm definitely gifting one of these bad boys uh, to some of my loved ones because inside of this Manscaped 4.0, you're going to find some of their best products. You know, you're going to find inside the Lawnmower Body Trimmer. It is the best trimmer on the market for your balls, for your butt, and your body. And also, there's the Weed Whacker. It's the ear and nose hair trimmer. Last thing we want is hair hanging out of our nose or out of our ears. And let's not forget the liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver. It's Ball Toner to maximize your ball hygiene routine. And if you get the performance package right now, you get two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Now, I'm telling you, Dads can't stop talking about this. And teens, they secretly buy this. And I'm telling you, the women will love you for it. Now, these are our picks. Manscaped surefire to win stocking stuffers. Number one, the Manscaped 2-in-1 shampoo and conditioner. Number two, the Manscaped cologne-infused body wash. Number three, the shears. 2.0 2.0 luxury four piece nail kit. Number four, crop mops. Those are the ball wipes for your stanky balls. Last thing you want, fellas, stanky balls. And number five, the Manscaped Signature Cologne. These formulations, all vegan, cruelty free, dye free, sulfate free, paraben free. So you know the products are legit. Whether it's for your partner, for your dad, for your brother, for your friend. Get them something they will actually use, and it's almost for sure to get a laugh. Make sure you hurry to the site to ensure these wild gifts arrive before the holiday season. And while you're at it, you get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash last stand. Again, 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped. Dot com slash last stand. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. It's the last stand. And here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. I'm Brian Custer. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And joining me today is one of the rising stars of boxing. This young man, unbeaten, 12 and 0, nine of them. Of those wins have come by knockout. He's the pride of Puerto Rico. He's none <laughs> under than Xander Zayas. What's up, Xander? Welcome Man. to the last stand. Brian, this is a pleasure being here. I feel amazing. And thank you for the introduction. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, you, listen, uh, I've been following you and really proud of you and the things that you've been accomplishing. Thanks. And you made the Madison Square Garden debut. Uh, you did it with style. Another first round knockout for yourself. First of all, how did it feel fighting in the Mecca and getting the knockout on top of that in your first fight in the Mecca? Man, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. You know, um, I was I was looking forward to to fighting at, at Madison Square Garden. Um, so I was really excited. You know, that that's that day in specific. I was I was just focused. You know, I didn't think about it. About I didn't think about being in Madison. I didn't think about being in New York. I just thought about it. Just another event, just another ring, another stage that I just got to go out there and put on a show. But uh, but again, getting the knock out there. Once I stopped the guy, and you know, I felt I felt the people, I felt the fans, you know, sharing my name. He felt amazing. He felt amazing. He felt like home. Listen, you know this. I'm not telling you anything new, but there's a guy named Miguel Cotto, also yes, from sir. Puerto Rico, <laughs> who used to always headline the Garden during Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend, and that was like the event. Could you see Xander Zayas being that guy, headlining 
MSG during the Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend? Most definitely. Most definitely. I just have to stay focused, stay dedicated, and and years to come, I will bring I will bring glory to to Puerto Rico and to the MSG. You know, here's the, here's the thing that I love because there's such a rising crop of just phenomenal young fighters. Yes, I know. Last uh, last year, it was Jerome Boots in it. He was he was voted prospect of the year. But now you've got guys like Brandon Lee. Uh, you've got Jared Anderson, uh, who you know very well, eleven and 0, 11 knockouts. And then you've got Xander Zayas. In your opinion, who is the 2021 prospect of the year? Xander's eyes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't see, I don't see the, and I was talking, I was talking about it with Jared Anderson. Um, he's one of my, one of my friends. Um, I don't see him as a, as a prospect anymore. You know, I see him as a contender. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's getting close to, to a world title shot. So I see him as a contender and um, Brandon Lee again, also, I see him more as a contender. I mean, he's fighting great opposition. He's, you know, in that top level already. So I don't see him either as a, as a prospect. So there, we already, you know, took out two big names that were in that list. Now, the only, the one, the, the only one left is me. And, and, and I feel this year, it was a really busy year. I've improved from one to, front, up to fight number six. I've, I've fought good opposition on the way. And I feel like I'm the prospect of the year. Love it. Um, you know, you were signed to top rank in a promotional deal there at the tender age of 16, the Sir. youngest ever <laughs> to do something like that. What kind of pressure came with that, Xander? A lot of pressure because now all eyes are all eyes were on me. Now I had to, you know, perform. Now I had to go out there and, and showcase what I was what top rank saw in me that people didn't know about it, you know? Um, but at the same time, it was just, it was just staying focused, staying dedicated, training hard. I mean, I pushed myself every, every single time in, in the gym. So I knew that I was going to prove and I was going to answer every question that anybody had, you know, it was just a, it was just a matter of time. And, 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 and right now I feel like I'm answering every question. I'm, I'll keep getting better. And I feel like I'm not even halfway into my prime. You know, I'm not even halfway into what Xander will be in the future. Um, I'm just, you know, looking good and, and, and training hard. That's the most, that's, that's, that's what I am right now. I think that's probably the reason why so many people are excited about you because, I mean, you look at you, you look at the way you fight, uh, the way you carry yourself. Hell, I mean, you're only 19, not even 20 yet. You still got Similac on your breath. And uh, and I think that's why so many people are excited about you. You know, I, I, I read you moved here to the States. Uh, you were 11 and you yes. didn't, you didn't know any English and learned it in four months. How did you do that? Man, you know, when you, when you were a kid, you're like a sponge. Um, anything they say, you pick it up real fast. And at the beginning, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say, yo, it was easy because it wasn't at the beginning. I struggled a lot, you know, being from Puerto Rico, not speaking English, coming here, having to make new friends, having to learn a different language, um, having to, you know, the cultural was, was way different. So it was a little hard at the beginning, but I got it down. You know, I got, I got a couple of friends to help me out, you know, help me out in the way. And, and here I am today. I mean, it feels amazing to be bilingual. I can speak English and Spanish and I can communicate in both languages. So sometimes I'd be talking to my dad in Spanish. Sometimes I'd be talking to him in English. It's just amazing. <laughs> Listen, this is why I give you all the props <laughs> in the world. I got, I got DVDs because I'm, I'm trying to learn Spanish and I've had them for two years and I still can't pick it up. So no, I give you a mad prop. You did it in four months. I still can't get it down. It's been two years. Um, you know, you win 11 national titles. Uh, also that you also, when you got here, you almost had to kind of overhaul your fighting style because you yes. talked about how, how different it was from the fighting here in the States compared to the way you guys fight in Puerto Rico. In what way? What yeah. was the biggest difference? Meaning in Puerto Rico, you know, yeah, we fought, we fought every weekend, but it was more like style than being an aggressor like in puerto rico i used to 
box, use the ring. Like, like if you go watch the Olympics and you go watch the Cubans, they they have that boxing, that ring IQ, and that's that's how they teach us also in Puerto Rico. You know, just having a ring IQ, moving around the ring, moving along the ropes, and you know, coming here. We had to be the aggressor. We had to be the guy in front of the other of the guy running around the ring and being, you know, throwing a lot of punches. So that was a big difference. That was a big difference back in the amateurs. We make the adjustments and we were able to, to you know, make it make our way into every every national that we won. How would you describe your fighting style now? If someone was talking about Xander Zayas and they said, "Man, this kid." Is he a boxer? Is he a boxer puncher? How would you describe your fighting style? Um, I feel like I'm a boxer puncher. I'm a, I have great, great IQ. Um, I have good combinations, um, powerful combinations, um, good defense. Um, I like to be the aggressor, like I said, and and just you know being being able to break somebody down. That's that's the main key for me. What do you see as your dream matchup at 154 pounds? Who is the guy Mm. in your weight limit right now where you said, man, let me tell you something. I am foaming at the mouth. I can't wait to get in the ring with this person. Man, uh, right now it's it's so, it's difficult because so many names out there. I mean, you have great fighters at 154, Um, but I know that when the time is right and whoever the top guy is, at the division at the time, and and I have the opportunity. I'm gonna take advantage of it. I'm gonna take advantage of of whoever it is. It doesn't matter, you know. I don't. I don't want to mention name because I don't know if if Charlo is gonna be the guy or Brian Castanero is gonna be the guy or or any of these other guys that are in that in that top fifteen. I don't know who's gonna be the guy when I get there. But whoever it is, you know, I just I just want to let them know that they gotta be ready because I'm I'm coming and I'm coming to take everything. Um, what did it mean to you? Uh, recently, Canelo Alvarez got on social media and sent you a little shout out there. What that mean to you when he did that? Man, he felt amazing. He's an inspiration. Somebody that I look up to. Somebody that I that I admire. You know, my favorite boxer right now. Um, to send me a message like that, let me know that that I could be in his position one day. Send him a message to to an upcoming fighter, to somebody that that admires me, to somebody that look up to me. Um. And I just, you know, I just have to stay focused, stay the course, and and keep training hard. Yeah, I know when you were young, a little young pup, man, you got the opportunity to meet Miguel Cotto. And yes. now that you're a little bit older, best piece of advice Miguel Cotto gave you? Man, um, let me see. He's giving me a lot of advice, you know. You know, stay focused, to stay dedicated, to to listen to my team, you know, to to be myself at all times, and and the most important thing, have fun in what I do. Another person I know you've looked up to, and you've certainly developed a, a relationship. And when you talk about the island of Puerto Rico, how about seven division champion Amanda Serrano? Uh, <laughs> how did you guys meet? How did that how that come about? And and talk to me about the, some of the things that she's she's told you. Man, she's like a big sister. She's like a big sister. Um, where we where did we meet? It's been a long time. I don't even remember where we met. Um, but she's been she's always been supportive in, in social media. She's always you know told me that that I had the guts to be to be the next the next guy in boxing. And you know it it means a lot. It means a lot coming from a, from a great boxer, from a great champion. You know that she is. I'm going Saturday. I'm going Saturday night to go watch her fight in Tampa. So I'll be there live. Um, but again, yeah, she's just an amazing person. I mean, the whole team, her, her, her whole entire family, her coach, her sister. I mean, they, they great, great people. And, and I got nothing but love towards them. Um, now, it brings up then this, because now all of a sudden she's working closely with Jake Paul. Well, what do you think about, what's your take then on these guys from YouTubers who all of a sudden now are jumping into boxing and making millions, Xander. And you got guys like yourself come up through yeah. the amateurs, the hard work. And, you know, you got, listen, there are a lot of guys who don't make near and probably will never make the kind of money 
that these guys, YouTubers, are making by fighting. Uh, and he's even moved to his camps to Puerto Rico to train. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, what do you think about these YouTubers who've kind of, well, you know, come into the sport? Well, you got you got the pros and cons. You know, you got the pros that you know they bring a whole new um, people, a whole new set of fans to watch boxing, to be intrigued of, of you know about boxing. Um, you also you also see them working hard. At the end of the day, Jake Paul works hard. You know, he he's taking it serious, and I respect that. I respect that he he's working hard. He you know he wants to aim up there. Um, but also, I just the, the only thing that I don't like is when he start calling all these great boxers and telling them, "Oh, I'm the number one boxer. I'm all of that." That I think that's disrespectful. I think that's when it gets disrespectful because the same way they earn their name in in the sport, you have to earn it, you know. Because they're not going out here going on YouTube saying I'm the best YouTuber because that's not what we do. You know what I'm saying? So it got the pros and cons. It's good and bad. But at the end of the day, as long as he as he stay focused and he can bring a whole new set of fans to to the sport and and you know make make boxing you know have more more people to to be intrigued about it, it is amazing. Um, let me ask you this because I know you're at one fifty four now. What is what is the, what's the limit uh, for Xander Zayas? I mean, do you eventually <laughs> see your career? Ending what 168? Uh, once where, where where would you you know? I know you want to be world champion, but where yes. do you see yourself campaigning uh, for the Man. for the time being? And then the end, where do you see yourself? Um, right now, 154 feels amazing. Um, I think I'll stay here for maybe a year or two. Um, win a world title here, then 160. I feel like 160 and 168 will be the main um, weight classes to you know. That I would be that I would be on my in my prime, you know, seventy five too. I want to hit seventy five and maybe maybe make a fight like Canelo did at two hundred, you know, get a belt there and come back down to one sixty eight, one sixty. But I think those two weight classes, one sixty, one sixty eight, will be the main the main focus in when I get there. Uh, for people who come on the show, Xander, we always let uh, people from social media who watch it and listen. Submit questions. We got a number of them, so I had to I had to pick the best ones here for you. <laughs> so uh, let's go. It's, this one starts off from uh, Twitter. Uh, gentleman asks, "How helpful was your experience sparring with Sean Porter?" Man, it was it was amazing. Um, it was really helpful because you have an aggressive fighter um, and, and a great champion in, in Sean Porter um, going at you, and you have to you know be focused because you got punches coming from everywhere. You got punches coming from up top, from the bottom. You got him moving all over the place. So you have to be really focused. And, and he helped me help my IQ a lot, you know, being able to, you know, stay, stay composed and staying in front of him and being able to slip those punches. It was, it was, it was really, really good. And, and he helped me a lot. And, and the best, the best thing you, you think you learned from that work with Sean Porter. Man, um, throwing combinations and move. Don't stay. Don't stay in one place um, after your combinations. Interesting. Uh, next one from Twitter. It says, uh, "Who do you want to fight next, Xander?" I just want to keep going up in a position. I want to make my A round debut with a with a tough opponent that is going to elevate um, elevate me to the next level. You know, I want to open the year strong. Close that out strong. Um, so whoever whoever top rank sends me, um, we're willing to fight, um, and, and I'm sure I'm sure we will be ready to to take on anybody. Uh, next one from Twitter. It asks Xander, list your opinion the top five dudes at 154 pounds. Man, um, well, right now you have to to list the best two at 154. Um, Charlo and Castaneda. Um, you got Eric Lubin. Which is which is a contender, man. There's a lot of guys. Fundora, who just who just won the um, the eliminator, and um, if I have to pick another one, Caballo Bronco from Dominican Republic. I mean, I know he fought at 150, uh, 160, but he said he could go down to 154. I think those are the best five guys for me right now at 154. Okay, Xander Zayas, we've come um, 
to the last section of this show. We call it the last stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, Andrew. You just give me the first, not the second, first thing that comes <laughs> to your mind. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Um, you Listen, you already talked about it, but 154 is a great weight division because, yes. I mean, Tony Harrison, Julian Williams, uh, Jared Hurt. I mean, you can go on and on and on about the number of guys. But in your opinion, who is the guy? Who, in your opinion, is number one at 154 right now? Other than me, I'm Charlo. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, in your opinion, who's the next great Puerto Rican champion? Is it Xander Zayas or Edgar Balanga? Man, you're putting me on the spot right now. You know, because Edgar, Edgar, Edgar is my guy. Edgar is my guy, but I have, I have to be confident in myself. So I have to say me. I like it. I like it there. Uh, in your opinion, when it comes to Puerto Rico and boxing, who's the GOAT? For me, Miguel Cotto. That's who I grew up watching. I love it. I love it. See, for me, is Felix Trinidad. That's my guy, man. I, I love yeah. this Felix Trinidad. <laughs> that is, uh, that's my guy. Um, listen, we talked about sparring, and I know you've sparred guys like uh, Danny Jacobs, Robert Easter yes. Jr., even Adrian Broner. Um, out of all of those guys, who did you learn the most from? Um, Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs. But um, if if I could change the question, I think one of the best sparrings was with um Robert Easter. Really? We we went yes we went to we went to war and no sparrings. Um, you know, I pushed him. He pushed me. It was amazing. He was amazing. That's my guy, too. So shout out to Robert Eastern. Yeah, I like Bunny. That's fantastic. Oh, man, that's good stuff. Uh, in your opinion, when will Xander Zayas be a world champion? 2023. Um, mid or end of 2023. I like it. Uh, last but not least, who is the best fighter right now under the top rank banner oh man um can i name two sure at least well terrence bud Crawford and um uh, and tyson fury two two of my favorite fighters listen i, I don't think you get a lot of argument out of those two because you you pick two <laughs> great ones uh yeah. <laughs> talking about great ones the way you keep going you're going to be one of the greats uh listen amen amen I, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. Uh, you're focused. And I think that's why so many people have gravitated to you. Uh, but I wish you all the, all the best. Nothing but success. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you for, for inviting me into the show. It, it was an amazing experience. So hopefully we could do it again. Oh, absolutely. Listen, that's what we do here on The Last Stand, folks. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And I'm telling you, Xander Zayas is a name that's going to be huge. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week.